Welcome back to Pennsylvania Outdoor Life. You know, the weather finally got cold. If you're gonna go out and do some ice fishing, please make sure the ice is safe. It's only been a couple of days below freezing, and then we're back in the warmer weather. How about that? So right now, we are going to continue our look at 40 years, and some of the stories behind some of the birds in Pennsylvania and throughout the country are really good, feel-good kind of stories. We've covered quite a few animal success stories over the past 40 years. Take, for example, the bald eagle. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service listed the bald eagle in 1978 as endangered through the lower 48 states. Through the protection of the Endangered Species Act, sound biology, and reintroduction, bald eagles staged a remarkable population rebound and recovered to the point that they no longer needed the protection of the Endangered Species Act. They are still protected, but the numbers of nesting eagles in Pennsylvania grows every year. The osprey is yet another success story. They were believed to be non-existent in Pennsylvania in the 1970s, but through the use of man-made hacking towers, reintroduction, and federal protection, there is once again a healthy population of nesting ospreys. Between 1980 and 1996, 265 ospreys obtained as nestlings from Chesapeake Bay nests were released in Pennsylvania. One third of those were released in the Poconos. The program funded by the Pennsylvania Game Commission, East Stroudsburg State College and the National Audubon Society and headed by Dr. Larry Ryman has been successful. 32 osprey have been hatched and released and the hope is some will return and breed here. Pennsylvania is not a native nesting area for the osprey. They are mainly coastal, but the osprey project could change that, making northeastern Pennsylvania an osprey nesting site of the future. The comeback of the peregrine falcon in Pennsylvania is yet another feel-good story, and we've been following it forever. The native eastern breeding population was wiped out in the early 1960s, primarily due to the effects of DDT. The peregrine falcon was listed on the endangered species list in 1973. A slow and steady expansion in the population was assisted by releases of birds coordinated by the Pennsylvania Game Commission in the 90s. The peregrine falcon's recovery resulted in its removal from the federal list in 1999 and Pennsylvania's threatened list in 2021. Most peregrines nest on buildings, bridges, smokestacks, and cliffs. We've been on hand as biologists lowered themselves down the side of mountains to collect the chicks. No nest is built. The eggs are normally laid in a small scrape in gravel on a high ledge or cliff. Some city nesting peregrines use platforms and boxes installed for them. If it flies, we probably covered it. Everything from the occasional visit from a snowy owl to the annual migration of snow geese and tundra swans. You can see how they all just take off right at once. And it's, it's a ripple effect. Yep. Look at that. Oh yeah, it's like a wave. The wave at a stadium or something like that, you know. Oh, look at this. That was the big one you were waiting for. <laughs> uh, uh. Oh, and there's a batch behind it I mm -hmm. didn't see. Yep. Yeah, it's hard to tell when you're not high up what's snow geese, what's ice, what's water. Biologists get together every year to keep track of the resident population of Canada geese. The plan is simple. The geese can't fly because they've molted their flight feathers. So they simply corral them to where they can build a cage around them. Then the banding begins. They've expanded rapidly and um, certainly provide a lot of recreational opportunities, both for hunting and for wildlife viewing, but at the same time um, create a lot of nuisance problems in some areas. So we've been trying to consistently liberalize um, our goose seasons and bag limits to try to address that problem. The comeback of the wild turkey is also a great story for Pennsylvania. 
The Game Commission is constantly trying to keep track of the state's turkey population and health. We've been invited to trap turkeys on several occasions. This is easily done in bad weather when turkeys will come to the bait. The use of cannon nets is quite common. Okay. What a what a neat what a neat experience this bird is. Two two uh, bands on its legs. It's a mature gobbler. And it was trapped this morning in Wayne County. And we're gonna let it go again. Legal for harvest this spring. And there it goes. It seems like we've put bands on just about every bird. We trapped kestrels to put bands on them. The kestrel is quite common in agricultural areas, and yet their populations are always being monitored. We watched as a college research project began in our viewing area. Dozens of tree swallow boxes were installed by Bloomsburg University students in hopes of attracting tree swallows to nest there. And guess what? It worked, and the young swallows were later banded. You might remember the story we did on barn owls. Their numbers are really low in the state, and biologists want to get a handle on their populations. The easiest way to do that is to put bands on the owlets. They were not happy about us taking them out of their nest box to be banded. <laughs> Sounds like a family reunion when we run out of hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Pheasants from out west were trapped and brought to Pennsylvania in an effort to establish a wild reproducing population. Most of the birds received radio collars and bands on their legs. And after the first year, we found out that somewhere around 10% died from the stress of release. At least we attributed that death to the stress of, of release and transport. This release took place for several years. Yes, we have trapped, netted, or banded many birds in the state. The list includes woodcock, or otherwise known as a timber doodle. This netting process takes place right at sunset. And let's not forget ducks. They get trapped every winter to help follow the migration patterns and fluctuating populations. And once again, we have to say thank you to all the biologists. Thank you to everybody that includes us and allows us to tag along and get those great stories for you. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back.